Okay, now we can see it. Okay, good. Um, at the end of my my, my uh, presentation, I would like to switch then to a browser for, for some live interaction. Uh, then I might ask you to stop and then I can share a different window. Um, so uh, the question was uh, how to make use uh, for intermodal transport uh, um, the, uh, from the learnings of modern multimodal passenger uh, trips. Uh, I'm not sure if everybody knows what our company is doing and uh, which role we had. Therefore, I started, if I could, uh, with a little bit about our role um, and uh, what has started uh, now in 80 for last century um, to switch over to the state of the art. And you can see on the uh, content list that I will uh, modify the order a little bit uh, so that I only switch once to, uh, to um, a browser window. Um, and then I can switch a little bit to the existing intermodal transport planners. So what is Harkon about? Uh, so Harkon uh, uh, was founded 84 and in fact, uh, we were the uh, inventor of uh, multimodal uh, um, algorithms and so all the passenger information systems which you had since there uh, were based on our algorithm and uh, we are market leader uh, worldwide for these kind of mobility solutions, mass applications and all what is behind. Um, and uh, this uh, now under the roof of Siemens since 2016 when we were bought by Siemens. Um, so just some figures. So uh, there are around 150 million computed trips daily and uh, 25 billion yearly ticket revenue only because of these computations. So uh, if uh, our services would not work, then uh, a lot of the uh, passenger uh, operators will get a severe problem. Um, so this is where we are coming from. So we are investing a lot, uh, growing a lot to have always the most modern solutions for multimodal journeys, uh, including all kinds of uh, modes and uh, making this as easy and uh, yeah, um, enjoyable as possible. Um, here on this slide, I, I, I tended to, to change it to transport, but the mobility challenges and trends and the transport challenges and trends are so similar that I decided just to keep the slide as it is. So because Sustainability is also for transport, most important, not only for passenger, but also for freight. Um, the travelers or the, slap, the, the shippers demand more flexible uh, transport options. Um, there's a problem of accessibility, for example, to get to, to railway stations. Um, and the level of digitalization is increasing a lot, but often not coordinated. So this is also, uh, as already mentioned, uh, an issue. And it's all going about cooperation, as mentioned uh, by Florian already. Um, this is just to say it's always an ecosystem. And what is very important is to provide proper solutions. You always have to have a look on all the different um, uh, components of the system. So this starts from the timetable planning or from the offer planning. Uh, goes about the, the management of the respective uh, infrastructure and the fleets. And uh, at the end, we are uh, ending up with the services, which then can be offered and managed. Um, just from the structure, uh, so we as a, uh, start already with all the kind of planning systems. So uh, uh, most of the large networks are planned with our our software already and then we have in the middle the block which is called mobility as a service but where all these uh, intermodal trip search and management of trips so um, um, are, are dealt with there are different uh, modules uh, all of them are fully interoperable also with outside systems so this is very important because we have 250 uh, large customers and many more hours uh, worldwide and they all have their existing systems to which we have to integrate um, and uh, therefore this is key uh, for such applications. Um, very 
often it's also the problem, and now I just took some outtakes out of, of, a, of a standard presentation, that the data needs to be integrated. There are different uh, kinds of uh, timetables provided, of information about services provided, which, do, which are partly overlapping, but which do not fit together. So uh, in, I think, 15 countries, uh, all these different uh, kind of informations of services um, is integrated with our uh, uh, integrate tool. Uh, data is completed, checked, uh, and then it can be used for all the different uh, mobility applications. Um, so it's about harmonization data, validating, refining, uh, bringing together um, everything today. So really everything is web-based, multi-client capable so that uh, different companies uh, can work on their own data uh, and it can then be used to feed all the other systems. The kernel, uh, now in the meantime, it's called Hafas Engine. Yeah, what is the engine? That's in, in fact the backend system where all the different algorithms are, uh, are, are working in and uh, which is uh, um, computing all these different trip options, multimodal, door-to-door, uh, offering, uh, let's say, uh, different uh, um, uh, capabilities for different uh, user setups, uh, etc. So this is the, the, really the kernel of this, uh, the system. Um, and then, uh, yes, yeah, multimodal routing options. You can always uh, see what is the best price what is the best time and for sure more and more important also for our customers is the sustainability aspect and all this can be uh, flagged uh, in uh, a specific customer profile or in a dedicated root search so all of this is uh, completely flexible and can be adjusted um, as I said, uh, we are working with uh, modern RPs, so because it's very important uh, that we can connect to uh, other systems. Um, also, the RP manager is state of the art uh, because uh, there are a lot of changes also on the customer level and uh, therefore it's really important to have everything transparent. Um, what is also important, not only for passengers, also for freight is uh, the information stream and uh, for sure most of you have have used uh, these nice little apps and it, it's always very nice that if you are proactively informed if your planned trip is not going to work for whatever reason so if there is a disruption uh, then uh, it's very important uh, that you are notified and not that you have to uh, reload your connection uh, every second uh, to discover that something is going wrong um, so therefore, the half as push service, we are taking in uh, information from uh, totally different systems. Uh, we check for the user preferences because especially also for freight, uh, when we talk about ETA, our customers said, yeah, but we do not want to inform, be informed if the ETA of our train in the terminal is changing for five minutes. Uh, for us, it counts when it's, uh, let's say, half an hour uh, change to the uh, uh, old prediction. So all this can be configured to the preferences um, of the different actors. So a terminal might have a different interest than a trucking company uh, or an intermodal uh, uh, train operator. So all of them uh, need the information, but they need it for different times and a different granularity. So then they can uh, subscribe to different connections intervals, as I said, different uh, feeds, uh, how to get this information and uh, also which kind of statistics over the uh, train runs in the past and, the, uh, and uh, in, in history you want to have. Um, Real-time hub is important because all these different uh, um, incoming data in real time uh, um, and also the um, data um, subscribers need to be managed and uh, still they are all using totally different uh, um, formats. So uh, our real time hub is, is there to uh, provide all the different systems with the right information at the right time. And real time really means when a bus is leaving a bus stop and the rear wheel has left, then this information is displayed wherever it has to be displayed. So real time means real time. Um, 
there's for sure also analytics behind so uh with uh, you can imagine with all the uh, millions and billions of data sets and uh, which are uh, used exchanged there's also a lot to be learned so uh, and therefore uh, since years we are also uh, having an analytics team uh, now also using ai for uh, for sure and there you can have all the variant uh, um, uh, usages like an incident detection far be be before uh, it is really visible. Um, you can uh, check through an occupancy analysis and can do some predictions where uh, uh, even in three days uh, you should avoid a certain transport route and things like this. Um, yeah, then you need information channels. Um, and there are different applications. So, for example, in Germany, if you might know, there are some uh, application which is Streckenpunkt-Info. So there you get all the information of what is happening on the German network, uh, where there are track uh, limitations, uh, if there are um, um, disruptions of of uh, of, um, um, uh, of um, Fahrstuhl. I don't know, miss a word at the moment uh, of an ex uh, um, escalator and things like this. So all this needs to be distributed, needs to be gathered and put into the right channels. Also, this is possible. I think I skip this now. Uh, there is a fleet control center, which is also basis of the ETA management platform. Some of you might know. So where uh, uh, we are calculating um, uh, for all the running trains uh, and uh, prediction. And uh, this can be seen then on the screen in the control center and uh, so that you always have an overview about what is happening on the network. So now switching, uh, uh, and I said the order, there will be a, a live set uh, on, on the uh, passenger things uh, uh, on the, uh, in the presentation. Very briefly, I hope all you have heard about uh, EDGAS and DXI. I took these slides just for the ones who have not heard about it from a presentation uh, done at the fair um, uh, last year. So um, I can just recommend to check this more into detail because the time is running and I will not have the time to go through, through, all, the through all the slides. But what is very important is uh, that with uh, DXI, um, there is uh, the step done and it, it's a work in progress, but they did very good progress so far really to consolidate all the data within an intermodal supply chain um, to provide real-time data to, to work on the harmonization of the interfaces and to make the data available and usable for all the authorized parties and to uh, support the supply chain transparency um, it's an electrical data so it's not data gathering it's really data exchanging um, there is also push and what is very important, um, all the data will be handled in this new EDGS uh, 4.1 standard format, which is very important to overcome also some of the uh, topics which were mentioned by Florian. So that now uh, there is uh, in a, uh, more or less a standard and this has to be used now uh, and has to be more and more implemented uh, in all the applications. Um, and the data should be exchanged between the operators, terminals, LSPs, the IUs, and uh, we are talking about master data, but also ETA data, and very important also the timetable data, uh, which is needed to uh, provide then the um, intermodal uh, trips. Um, it is, there will be standard messages for all the um, process steps in the, uh, in the uh, chain of an intermodal chain. Um, so uh, here uh, all the messages are available and uh, uh, will be used. Um, yeah, and I think I can skip this. Uh, you will get the presentation in, uh, later uh, anyhow. Um, and uh, what is now we could, maybe you could stop my sharing or I can do it and I switch to I hope you can again see a screen. Yeah, we can see the front 
app, app application. Okay. Good. Uh, so this just because it, it's also changing uh, da daily. So it's it's uh, um, you can also check it on the web. So it's nothing confidential. This is you know, are the most um, uh, up to date um, uh, applications and, and views. And I decided not to cap copy them out, but just to to highlight some of them. So uh, that there are all these modern dashboards, it's clear. What is important, we are always talking about the live navigation because when you're operating a service or when you are on a trip, you really want to get um, your um, travel companion, as we call it for the, for the passenger, uh, uh, which is helping you at any time uh, uh, during your journey. And uh, this should be as alive as possible. What is also important then uh, for, for yourself, but it would be the same for, for freight, is that there are totally different profiles, totally different needs of operators. And uh, so you can um, um, adjust all this, how many transfers you want to have in your trip and all these things, how, how uh, long the uh, transfers must be. And uh, um, this can all be flexible managed uh, in the applications themselves. And whatever you see here on a, on a smartphone, you can also have on an iPad or on a web screen. So it's, it's uh, not only focused on, on smartphones. Um, you have all the uh, search results at a glance. So you can easily filter and sort them um, and can label them if you want to, to use them for later. Um, for sure, also the booking is handled they are now not the container will book himself. It's a bit difficult, but maybe uh, the, the manager in the back office. Um, the disruption information was just mentioned by Florian is very important. So everybody has to be informed. Alternative routes have to be provided. Um, so uh, this is also in. Um, for sure, every application can be customized and branded. Um, and I think this is, you can have your own dashboard. And now, Let's just switch to what is uh, already there. I hope you can see now the, the trip planner. Yes, it looks like. So just as a, at a glance, because then I think my time is also over. So uh, what you can already do today is, for example, when you want to go from Stockholm um, to Verona, then you can quickly search for a multimodal connection, including uh, the, the water part, so the short sea navigation part. You get the various options. Uh, you can see it on the right side. You can see the overall time, uh, the uh, AE connection, how many uh, interchanges you have. You see the CO2 uh, reduction, so the savings which you have. And when you click on the, uh, on the trip, then you get also more information about the, the trip itself, about which kind of loading unit, also, also profiles which are allowed. You get also more information about uh, what is behind. So if you're not familiar with this, so there should be a mouse over. Ah, that, no, it's showing, not sure where it is. Um, and uh, the same also for the, for the ship part. And uh, you can also see the service days uh, when it is operated. Um, when you go back from the details, you can also click on the train itself on, uh, and then you get more information also if there are intermediate stops. Um, what you could also do uh, if you want to know, okay, I, I have a specific uh, terminal, I want to get the departures from these terminals, you can also look for this, for example, for Hamburg Bay Verda. Then you get also an, uh, information about the terminal itself, where it is located with the map. Um, you have the departures, the arrivals. You have more information about the terminal, about the agencies, about the terminal services, uh, about the booking options. And also you get some information about the storage conditions, uh, uh, which are there. Unfortunately, this is uh, partly in German, but now no, it's, it's English version. Good. Um, and uh, this is what you already have um, as options. 
just as a glance, and now coming uh, to what is the current uh, developments in EORail, you might know that in EORail there's a, um, a part which is called seamless. And in the seamless part, there's also a, a work package about multimodal um, uh, <coughs> freight transport. And uh, what is done is that there all these DXI functions. So DXI will be connected to all these applications. Uh, the data format will be switched to EDIGIS 4.0 so that in, in fact, very easily, every operator who is uh, uh, um, connecting to DXI could push his services um, through uh, um, DXI uh, to uh, these kind of information systems and can then, uh, and these can be uh, displayed uh, to the uh, shippers directly. Are there any questions? So oh, thank you, Lars. As we are a little out of time, there are some questions in the chat that you can answer. If not, we, maybe we'll have time at the end. Yeah, I think the last question I already answered. So at the moment, it's Combi Farcare plus cooperation partners. So there are also, um, for example, uh, Merchitalia services included that in Italy. So uh, it's uh, the Combi Farcare data set, which includes also 20 to 30 percent of other operators where they have connections, but the system itself is, is open to, uh, to all operators. Okay, thank you, Lars. Now it's